Our mission as the Civilian Space Exploration Team is to be the first civilian team in history to launch a rocket that reaches space. All systems are go for launch. T minus 10 seconds. in a role it appears at this point
does not appear. All right, we are in the box and ready to go. Ten seconds to release. Cross your fingers and say a prayer. Okay, here we go, guys. It's real tough to see. Okay, tally hold the smoke. There he is, guys. He's in the climb. He's riding the fingers of flame. Look, you can see the, the flame. Sky. You can see the flame from here, Mike, or uh, Jim. Our webcast viewers are enjoying unprecedented camera coverage from the ground here. A radar-locked camera from Edwards Air Force Base tracking Spaceship One as it streaks through the sky to punch through the atmosphere and reach suborbital flight. Thirty-five seconds, 135,000 feet into the flight. Looking for an 87. Appear to be a scripted maneuver. Shut down. Come on, Mike. We have shut down main engines to Spaceship One. Still in the climb. 250,000 feet still in the climb. Five knots indicated, so feathers coming. These are the tense moments, folks. Communications with the uh, air show center here. have been cut off and we are waiting to hear from them that Mike Melville is okay all systems are nominal wow look there's at your that. downlink camera look from at that folks. aboard spaceship one looking down at the earth 330 they made it Jim 330,000 feet they made it Yes. 330,000, that would put them over the top. Yep. 328,000 feet needed yep. to uh, achieve the required altitude of 62 miles, 100 kilometers.
So you're going to have Virgin Galactic joining Virgin Atlantic as a way to spend your tourism dollars if yeah. you're stupidly rich. <laughs> but you know, but the problem is, I think that's all a scam. But you know, but the problem is, I think that's all a scam, scam, scam. I, I really do. I think I just got asked about this. I, the point is that it's exponentially. Look, to go in Earth or near Earth orbit, you know, to go the distance between New York and Washington above the Earth, yeah, maybe. Maybe private industry can do it, but it's just exponent. The laws of physics say it's just exponentially more expensive and exponentially more difficult to actually explore somewhere interesting. Yeah. And uh, well, 20, and, and right? therefore, I don't think it's ever going to be. I don't think private industry is ever. Tail of shock diamonds in its wake. At 2,200 miles per hour, the aircraft becomes superheated from the friction created as the air rushes by. And indicating Mach 3.0 at this time. When you go Mach 3, the amount of heat that the whole airframe, everything experiences all this heat, and nothing that they have at the store works. You know, there's no paint, no rubber, nothing. You know, metals, uh, plastics, all, all this stuff is useless. And they just had to go through so many contortions to, to make every single part of the plane tolerant of these extreme temperatures. Temperature affects everything on this airplane. The average person probably is not cognizant of that fact, but the faster you go, the harder things get. One of the puzzles of extreme heat was never really solved. Sealants for the fuel tanks, they never came up with a polymer that would seal the joints in the skin panels that hold the fuel in, so the blackbirds sit on the ground and weep. That seems silly. You can look, oh, these stupid guys back in the 60s didn't know what they were doing. There's still no plastic, you know, that can get to 700 F and not turn into a burnt hot dog oxide. At an altitude of 30,000 feet, the X-1A is air launched from the B-29. The plane begins its steep climb with rocket engines blasting it upward at supersonic speed. Four minutes later, the X-1A was at 90,000 feet distance of almost 18 miles into the heavens. Major Murray has described his feeling upon reaching the tremendous altitude as one of incredible loneliness, especially when the skies darkened around him and the Earth's curvature became clearly visible. Yes, this is the X-1A. Its records of 1,650 miles per hour and 90,000 feet in altitude are more achievements in aviation science, and they will bring valuable data to be used in the tactical aircraft and guided missiles of the future for the nation's defense. Quiet dawn to a big day, December 14th. For several months, the Air Force had been proud owner of the world's altitude record, set in May of 1958 by an F-104. It had quite a run for a modern record, but first a Russian P-431 and soon afterward a Navy F-4H sent it tumbling. The new Navy marked 98,560 feet. The Air Force wanted to get it back, but odds were against it. No modern jet has ever been able to recapture its own record. The earthbound people keep watch. There he is, angling down after his swift high leap. He has been where no other man ever has. He's hacked it, beat the Russians by a mile and a half, and the Navy by almost a mile. The new record, 103,395 and a half feet. Hi guys, this is Dr. Aeronautics. Here's a quick video of our great trip to 100,000 feet. Um, this is actually a playback of me attempting to set the world altitude record. So basically I realized that reaching 100,000 feet is gonna be a lot harder than I originally thought. 
So I figured the only way that we would be able to see this on, on YouTube without me recording a million times over and dying of exhaustion was to record each one and then when we got the successful one, go ahead and do that. So I've been trying for a long time and today on my fourth attempt, I set a record above 100,000 feet. And I was so excited when it happened that I started screaming yes like crazy. So I'm actually going to mute the microphone when we get there. Um, but I'll just basically explain what I did as I try and find it. So let me go ahead and find the start of the Zoom. Okay, so this is right before the Zoom. Uh, first of all, we had an engine modification by a little bit to... Um, allow us to travel up to Mach 2.2 uh, in spite of us not being okay usually at that temperature. Um, we're also starting at 46,400 feet which is the working number that I decided was good and here is my countdown. Three, two, one.